Hello, my dear gardening friends. Spring is here and it's time to feed our roses. And you know, gardeners say that they feed roses. Actually, we enhance the soil performance. We add nutri nutrients and microelements to the soil, and then our roses are able to extract all that good goodness for great performance and blooms. So today, a big topic, fertilizers. And the beginner rosarian can be overwhelmed coming to the garden center and see this big long aisle with all the fertilizers. Slow release. Fertilizers specifically, formula, specifically formulated for certain um, group of plants. Different additives to the soil. Different soil amendments. Soil enhances. So the beginner rosarian can come in and get totally overwhelmed. So to help with that feeling, I decided to create this video and we will have two different approaches to discussing fertilizers. First would be uh, I chose the most popular fertilizers on the market and specifically those which are suited for growing roses, so that would be one approach. And second approach would be we are going to look at fertilizers, analyze the negatives and positives because each fertilizer has those and we are going to look at those fertilizers from the scientific point of view. We are not going to talk about one gardener um, experiences in, uh, in her garden or what I am experiencing in my garden. Um, if I have my five cents to put in, you I will clearly tell you that this is my personal opinion. Otherwise, we are going to look at what science says, the solid negatives and positives of each organic fertilizer. So let's begin. The first fertilizer we are going to focus on would be alfalfa meal. And what is alfalfa meal? Alfalfa meal is a, a perennial plant in the legume family. And how it is harvested, how alfalfa meal is made is the top portion of the plant is cut off, let it dry and turn into the hay pellets or powder, depending what are we using it for. I grew up in the fields of Ukraine where Ukrainian farmers used to grow miles and miles of alfalfa. And um, there in Ukraine, uh, that crop is used as a, a livestock feed, the same here in US. And also it's used as a cover crop for the fields to protect soil during cold times. Recently, alfalfa meal also is becoming very popular as a uh, fertilizer, especially a rose fertilizer. And why is that? There are three beautiful benefits of alfalfa meal scientifically proven. The first one is it is rich in nitrogen and that nitrogen is slow release nitrogen. Why is nitrogen so important in spring for plants? Well, nitrogen is responsible for strong growth and roses are strong feeders and strong growers they need that nitrogen to push new canes and create new beautiful foliage we want rose to perform well in spring and build up all that mass for future bloom production right so roses are hungry for nitrogen in spring and if we supply rose with alfalfa meal, especially in spring, it's a good source of slow release nitrogen. So that's a great benefit of alfalfa meal. The second great feature is that scientifically proven alfalfa meal actually has this growth hormone and then hor at that hormone, the way it interferes with the plant, it doesn't act as just another extra fertilizer. Because of that growth hormone, our plants break new cells, develop new cells easier, create new strong shoots easier, they develop stronger root system, and as a result, the performance and the growth and blooms of the plant is so much better. So that's another thing to consider, very unique feature of alfalfa meal. And the third great benefit of this fertilizer would be it is very rich in minerals, in vitamins, microorganisms, microelements, and uh, our roses again, strong feeders, right? And if we add alfalfa meal to our rose, it's organic option to feed it well. But of course, there is a caveat to all of it. 
There are several of them. So the first one, very important for the beginner rosarian. Since our farmers would love to grow alfalfa without any weeds on the farm, right? Weeds can be a big issue. So scientists came in with a genetical alteration. They inserted a gene into a new alfalfa plant, which can withstand huge applications of a weed killer on the fields, like something like Roundup, in big concentrations. And this genetically modified alfalfa is not sensitive to those applications. So as a result, the growing of alfalfa is more economic because uh, growers can apply this uh, weed killer and alfalfa is not sensitive to it. But if you buy no, not organic or this GMO altered alfalfa, you will end up with traces of Roundup, which is a killer basically for your rows. So it is very important to buy organic or not GMO altered alfalfa. And you know what, if you want to save money, alfalfa is sold in the, uh, you know, livestock uh, uh, food stores. Again, they're sold in big 50, uh, ba 50 pound bags. But again, very important, you have to remember that it has to be organic. Otherwise, there is alfalfa meal specifically modified for garden use, and it is somewhat expensive. Another uh, three additional caveats would be, from scientific point of view, the studies were made only on this growth hormone. So not necessarily alfalfa meal was studied, alfalfa plant was studied. So there's just a little thing to keep in mind. Science shows that alfalfa meal can somewhat alter alkaline soils into more alkalinity, but research shows that change is not very drastic and it's not very, harmful to the soil. And the last one would be, of course, nitrogen. Our roses push beautiful succulent growth, and who loves that? Aphids, of course. So expect if you're using alfalfa meal, you might, just might, have a little bit more extra aphids going to eat your rose. But otherwise, According to my five cents, the negatives are so small and positives there are so big and it's such a good organic option to feed our roses that gardeners should definitely look into alfalfa meal and decide for themselves if they want to use it. But science says yes, it's a great organic option. Second organic fertilizer would be earthworm castings. Again, what is it? Well, our worms go through the soil and they eat all sorts of uh, decayed uh, particles of plants, decayed animal uh, remains, soil, all other little fungi. By the way, fungi can be pronounced in three different ways. Fungi, fungi and funguses. Interesting little trivia to know. So earthworms go through all that stuff, they leave it behind and they leave it into the form which is easier to be digested by the plants which is a great benefit for the plants, right? Uh, everything what makes the life of the plant easier and better is great for the gardener, right? The second great benefit of um, earthworm castings would be that the water intake and retention of uh, the casting crumb would be two, three times more than average soil crumb. So what does it do to the gardener? What does that mean? It means that our soils can retain water in two, three times more than average soil. And it is very important for somebody like me who is gardening in a very sandy soil where water leaches out, all the nutrients leach out so quickly and I always have to replenish them. So uh, castings are very good for that. The third benefit of earthworm castings would be that uh, the surface of the casting crumb is so much bigger than the uh, surface of the crumb of soil, so much more beneficial life microorganisms can live on that surface. And as a result, by introducing earthworm casting into our soil, we enrich the life of soil. And healthy soils uh, means that our plants are healthy. Now, do we have to 
buy earthworm castings on a regular basis. My five cents, here is my five cents. You don't have to because if your soil is healthy, you have presence of worms in your soil. If you have a good amount of uh, organic matter in your soil, worms love all the good food and they will be uh, very ready to eat and come into your garden, multiply and create earthworm castings for you. The fourth greatest, I think it is one of the greatest uh, benefits of earthworm castings would be, and it's very rarely mentioned in the literature, I, I found it and I was very pleasantly surprised. So here it is. Uh, earthworm castings, when earthworms uh, uh, go through the soil, they leave behind enzymes which are, are able to dissolve the membrane, membranes of uh, soft body insects like aphids, and mealybugs, which are disturbing our soils. And I understand some gardeners deal with them more than others. I don't really deal with those pesky things a lot in my garden. But what is the correlation between earthworms and aphids, you might say? Well, that enzyme is left in the soil and aphids feel the presence of that, of that enzyme. They know that that's a harmful substance to them and they actively avoid those soils. Can you believe that? So that's another thing to keep in mind about earthworm castings. So bottom line, it is very beneficial to your soil. Do you have to buy it? Yes, if you have poor soils or you have a new construction where the construction people built your house and they just ruined your soil around it. So in order to enhance the life of the soil, you can bring and buy earthworm castings. Otherwise, my five cents, if your soil is very healthy, the worms there in the ground is doing that job for you. Very popular and controversial fertilizer number three, Epsom salt. And when I buy, not buy, when I look through old books, so uh, rose growing books, very often people just say, okay, during the planting, just throw a handful of Epsom soil, salt in the uh, soil and it will help your rose to create strong, um, uh, strong uh, canes, it will uh, help rose to um, create those basal shoots and all that stuff. And science is totally different about Epsom salts. So let's approach it from this point of view. If one gardener whose soil is deficient in magnesium sulfate, which is Epsom salts are, and suddenly that gardener adds that, so uh, that substance into their soil, their roses suddenly will start performing so well. And here comes the fairy tale of Epsom salts to be added to every soil. If you really want to do that, first do the soil test in your garden and see if your soil needs that magnesium. Because if your soil doesn't need magnesium and you add that into your soil, you can really alter the uh, uptake of other elements by your rows and you can really mess up your soil. Uh, so the scientific Research on Epsom salts prove it not to be beneficial for every soil. Uh, roses are not salt tolerant. And they're not going to like the soil over rich in magnesium. So do your soil test and then decide to listen to your neighbor Rosarian. How about all those slow release fertilizers? And there are many of them organic options on the market and a lot of them are specifically formulated for let's say blueberries for acid loving plants for roses for tomatoes and list goes on what about those uh, rose specific slow release organic fertilizers well let's talk about them the positives of those fertilizers are that they are already pre-mixed for you you don't need to worry what to do, how to mix it all and figure out the balance of different nutrients. It comes in a very easy used granular form, which you can easily add into the soil and you are done. So job is done. So that's for the convenience of the gardener. Oh, we have a nest here of does and she just got scared of me. Oh no, she's right there sitting. Okay, hello. But what about negatives of slow release fertilizers? Well, when we add those into the soil, we really don't know. Um, 
when the fertilizer ends, you know, it's slow release, usually it's several months, and we should always follow the directions on the, the label, on the package. But if the weather is dry and we are forgetting to uh, uh, water our roses, that fertilizer is not available because it comes in granular form. And if we apply that fertilizer to our roses and we forget to water, the ground. Remember, with slow release fertilizers, the plant has to be well hydrated, watered ahead of time and after application. So when we forget to do that, that can burn the roots of the plant. So we have to keep that in mind. Very important to do watering before and after. Also, I read that uh, slow release fertilizers can slowly build up imbalances in soil. That's why I'm doing the test on uh, my rose beds to see where soil is there but so far my roses are performing so well and I'm, I am using slow release rose fertilizers. Uh, I think that because my soil is untouched so the structure is there it's not disturbed. I do organic uh, gardening so I don't add any harmful synthetic fertilizers into the soil so that's beneficial my soil is very healthy i assume and as a result my garden does well through the season i don't have major outbreaks of diseases and uh, poor performance from my plants fish emulsion fertilizer i just went to my garden center and i see it's readily available together with all other fertilizers so what is it? It is a byproduct of fish industry and it does differ which fertilizer company you're using because some companies use uh, fish byproducts from organic, from wild caught fish and others use them as, as the products from farming industry. So the organic uh, caught fish in the wild would have more micro elements and nutrients in them. So keep that in mind, do your research, which company you are using. And why fish fertilizer is so good for our plants? Well, it is, the first benefit is it's fast acting as a, if it is applied as foliar feed. Otherwise, uh, we generally use, use fish, fish fertilizer as a, a drench around the plants, uh, the soil area and it enriches the soil with micronutrients, elements, it adds to the life of the soil, and again, life of the soil is life of plants. The second good benefit of fish emulsion would be it increases the microbial diversity in soil, which is very good. Richer diversity in soil is better health. Also, it, of course, adds a lot of elements to the soil. So usage of fish emulsion is good for our soils. I do use it on my uh, abovitis and I think they're doing very well despite being somewhat in uh, shady conditions, which abovitis do not like. But there are some negatives of fish emulsion. I never use it on my front yard because it is somewhat stinky and I don't want my neighbors to hate me. So that's probably the biggest negative of using fish products. The second negative, which is not a biggie, but for some people are, it comes as a concentrate and you have to mix it with yourself with water. And the last negative, which can be uh, problematic is if you buy fish uh, concentrate from not a rep reputable producer, it can come with a lot of heavy metals because it's fish. So keep that in mind and do your research. Otherwise, fish emulsion is a great way to enhance the performance of your garden.